Hi there, so I thought winter was over, but in fact it snowed a lot in the mountains. And this weekend we're going out with the Defender and going to free camp, I don't know where. So I'm taking you with me today because I'm organizing and preparing all our stuff for this weekend out with our Land Rover Defender. Yes, I want to take you through everything. So what we pack, what we need to organize for a short weekend out with the four wheels drive, uh, how we choose a place for stopping overnight, and also maybe the most important, what are the differences between four wheels drive overlanding here in Switzerland and other country where it's way easier than here. Yes, we live in a beautiful country with amazing sceneries, delicious cheese fondues or raclettes, but not really a country for four wheels drive overlanders. Some of you might already know why I bring this point up and I'm really curious to know the answer to my question, which is, have you already went off-road and free camp for more than two weeks here in Switzerland? Yes, leave that comment down below, please. Okay, I'll get back to this just afterwards. Now, follow me through my weekend preparation. When we go out for the weekend to enjoy family time outdoors, we often leave on Saturday mornings and not Friday evenings because the children still have their sports lessons. We don't want to be in a hurry to quickly leave home and then try to find a ni nice place to stop overnight. We're here to enjoy, so there's no point to stress us out on purpose. As said earlier, I really thought that winter was over and that we won't have any more snow, but it's not the case. It snowed a lot last week in the mountains. So luckily we will have a overlanding weekend out and bivouac in the snow. I don't know how high we will be able to go to find a nice spot for free camping and also if we plan to go snow hiking for example but what's sure is that we really need to take all our snow gear yes it takes up a lot of space but it's necessary I mean who doesn't like to play in the snow right let's have a quick chat about how it is to overland Switzerland and free camp here with a four wheels drive just to realize a bit better here's the map yes you already know we are in the middle of Europe and also have the chance to have many mountains but if we look at this map a little closer wait I'm going to switch to satellite mode so it will be more explicit this country is tiny and the inhabited areas are very small. There are small towns and villages all over the country with more or less small forests a bit everywhere. You could think, oh cool, I'm just gonna go there and find a nice place to stop overnight and also make a fire to enjoy even more the evening while free camping. Well, this is without thinking about these signs. Haha, -ha, the real challenge here in Switzerland is to find a track without this kind of sign. There, now you know. Let's get back to our organization. A quick look at the weather all around the country, which seems quite nice though. So where should we go? Maybe we could go around this area or maybe at La Brévine, which is called Swiss Siberia as temperatures go down to as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius sometimes, but obviously not this weekend. As it's ski season, it also reduces the places where we can go as many tracks are for skiers, Nordic ski or winter hikers. We live around here and we could easily drive through all our country in about three to four hours of time, but for a weekend out, there's no point spending so much time on the road. And due to COVID and restrictions from border countries, we have to stay in our lovely little Switzerland. We can't go to France, for example, because they're asking for a negative PCR test, which cost 150 Swiss francs. Yes, you heard me, 150 Swiss francs to do one of these tests to be able to go out uh, on the weekend in a border country. Would you pay for that? I don't think so. So we won't and we will stay in our lovely Switzerland. 
Okay, so to choose a place where we'll go for the weekend, it's more or less like this. We first check the weather forecast to know what type of clothes we need for the weekend. Then we have a look on Google Map for an area that isn't too far from our home and that seems to be accessible by car and where there's a forest in which we could uh, stop overnight. And that's it. We don't plan more than that only because we don't know how it'll be when arriving. Will there be forbidden signs everywhere? Will there be tons of snow blocking the track? Or maybe the track will be converted in a Nordic ski course? Who knows? Well, we don't. Yes, we could go back to a place where we've already been, but it's less fun. Here we are back on the floor for the next step, which is packing up all the clothes for the weekend. So I already uh, put all the clothes out like this. I can show you what type of clothing we take for a weekend out during cold season. The most important is the base layer. We all have merino wool as base layer and also for sleeping. Better than cotton in our opinion and way better than synthetic. We always take two pairs of socks and also two beanies like this. If they are wet we can stay dry and warm. Then depends on everyone but it often goes like this. So merino wool as a base layer and also for the socks. A fleece jumper, often leggings for the girls and outdoor pants for the boys. A scarf or a buff and a beanie as said before and some gloves for everybody. Then the jackets for wild camping and when we want to make a fire camp. So the children use their ski jackets. My husband has this old Carantia jacket that is uh, fully synthetic and I have this old and heavy coat which is lined with a down jacket. For outdoors activities I would recommend having synthetic jackets as they will evacuate moisture more efficiently than a downfill coat and it will also be easier to wash. There you go for the clothing. Now next, how do we stay warm while sleeping in the Defender? Some of you already know, we bought a Webasto. It's here. No, we haven't done the install yet so we won't be able to test it this weekend. This Webasto is mainly there to preheat the engine when temperatures are low and the bonus is that the children will benefit from this install because they will have the heating inside of the vehicle as they sleep inside. We don't plan to install this for the rooftop tent for the moment but we'll see later on. But we still have to do the install so this weekend will be like always just good sleeping bags Kids have these ones for sleeping but we will pass them on the ones we have in the rooftop tent like this. They will have a warm double layer of sleeping bags. And we have these ones and I also have a fleece liner just in case it's really cold. Where's the fleece liner? I'm just going to get it. There. <laughs> My fleece liner bought in Australia. I'm not going to talk about tools or recovery gear we take as most of this always stays in our car. I already shared some videos about this topic. You can find them in the link up there. Or up there. I don't know. <laughs> Last thing we need to organize when we go out for the weekend with our Land Rover Defender is the food. Well, only half of it because we always keep this food bag in our Defender and we only need to top up on fresh food depending on what we want to eat. This bag is a savior because we could clearly just leave home without topping up on fresh food and be okay for the weekend. So here's what we have in there. So we have our utensils in a box, we have coffee, we have a small towel, we have paper towels, we also have trash bags, small trash bags and two types of plastic bags, the bigger ones and smaller ones. We have this for the barbecue, <laughs> very useful. We have our jet boil, our beloved jet boil with gas. And then we have all the food. So we have rice, pasta, some pasta, quinoa, black lentils, beluga lentils, 
Then we also have different types of teas. We have some dried soup. Uh, this is very useful. And guacamole herbs. Then we have vegetable broth. Salt. Mustard. Then we have different types of dried herbs. We love these ones. They are from Switzerland. <laughs> one for chicken, one for fish and one for beef. Delicious. There you go. We obviously have pepper and very important olive oil. And what the last stuff we have are four cups. There you go. That's our food bag that always stays in the car. There you go. This is everything we take during cold season and how we plan our four-wheel drive overlanding weekend out and free camping with our modified Land Rover Defender. Hope it will give you some good ideas for your organization. Let me know how it is to four-wheel drive overland and free camp in your country. Is it the same as here? Are there many restrictions and it becomes a challenge to find a nice place to stop overnight or is it easy? Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. I post a video every week. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye!